Um, they're here to speak to you today about um, changes you can make in your life, choices you can make. Um, I actually work for Mr. Williams. He is a drug and alcohol counselor intern at First Step, which is our county drug and alcohol treatment center. Um, he's written some books. He's going to talk to you about all that. So I ask that you pay attention and don't be on your phones or like chatting. Um, if you've got a writing utensil, please get it out right now. If you need one, I have some pens with me. Okay. Um, any questions on anything before we get started? No? Yeah. Gentlemen, please extend these folks the respect that you would extend me on a regular basis because uh, I'm sure that they will be as impressed if you do that as I am typically. So, just keep that in mind. And my purpose, and my purpose. And my purpose. 
came with, came with instructions. instructions. Everybody in here under the sound of my voice has a purpose in life. But in order for you to maximize that purpose, it will be dependent upon how you carry out the instructions. I gave the exact same instructions to everyone. But all of our papers came out different. So my name is Michael Mickey Williams Jr. This is my beautiful wife, Linnell F. Williams. We're here on behalf of the Minor Adjustments Program. Minor Adjustments is dedicated to preventing and reducing crime. Our primary purpose is to teach men or women how to make the minor adjustments that are necessary in their lives, which will allow them to obtain and maintain a productive lifestyle after incarceration and or rehabilitation. Our motto is anywhere but backwards. Everybody say anywhere, anywhere. but backwards. Okay. Now, our primary purpose is to help individuals who are incarcerated or who are currently on drugs. That's our main purpose, is to prevent and reduce crime and prevent and reduce drug use. But we're here today because we're stepping into another a level of it because we want to prevent you from even going to jail or prevent you from even trying drugs. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to use my own life experiences to show you that the only reason I ended up where I ended up was because I did not carry out the instructions right. My parents gave me instructions. My pastor gave me instructions. My mentors gave me instructions. My teachers gave me instructions. But no matter what instructions they gave me, I never carried out those instructions. So today, I'm going to just show you some things errors I made, and some of the progress I made, and some of the success I made. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. First, I want to show y'all is this picture right here. Notice, that's me, I'm skinny, so. See that? You see that picture, a whole bunch of guys, right? Next picture. Look at that. That's me right here. Do anybody want to take a guess where I took these pictures at? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Somebody, I need crowd participation. Prison. Huh? Can't talk. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These were taken in prison. But notice what Michael was doing. I don't get a picture. Listen. Notice, everybody say I have a purpose. I have a purpose. Notice what I'm doing. What am I doing? Smile. Smile. Where I'm at? Prison. Yeah. What am I smiling about? You does exactly. Everybody say I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I have a purpose. So these pictures are me in Riverfront State Prison in Camden, New Jersey, which has simply been torn down. Yes, yes, yes. Now listen, these pictures, watch this. These pictures are actually, anybody want to take a guess where these were taken? Outside of jail. Where? Church. At the prison, church. Now, these prisons, most of them, were when I was addicted to crack cocaine and heroin. And again, what am I doing? These pictures, I was actually addicted to crack cocaine and heroin. Since the age of 16 to the age of 38, I found myself addicted to crack cocaine and heroin. In Bridgeton, New Jersey, I was sitting downtown and I was addicted, I was suicidal. I was thinking about how can I kill myself because my life had felt worthless. I ended up in a situation I could not believe that I had went all these years not following the instructions that people was giving me. So I ended up in 2009, or August 2009, and I was sitting up in prison, and I was just sitting there, and I was feeling like I was worthless. I was feeling like I never had a purpose. I was feeling like no one paid attention to me. No one gave me the instructions. I was just feeling worthless. I did not believe that I had a purpose. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. Say, I have a purpose. I, have a purpose. I was sitting there that day, and I was feeling like these buckets. Everybody say a bucket with holes in it. A bucket with holes 
I was sitting there that day, and I was feeling worthless. And there's a story that I tell all the time about a man who had became a multi-millionaire. This particular man, he would wake up in the morning, and he would thank God that he was alive. He would study and go downstairs, drink some coffee. He would go outside to his barn where his animal was. Before he went out his door, he would grab a stick by his door, go out to the barn where the animals was. Inside the barn, he had a pile of good buckets over here, and he had one bucket with holes in it. Everybody said bucket with holes in it. Bucket with holes in it. So he would grab one of the good buckets, and he would grab one of the, bu the bucket with holes in it. He would walk across his crop, get the water for the animals, and bring the water back to the barn to give the animals. Every day, week after week, week, month after month, year after year, he did the exact same thing. Then one day, he went downstairs, went out to the barn. Before he went to the barn, grabbed the stick. He went into the barn. He grabbed one of the good buckets, and then he grabbed the bucket with the holes in it. And when he went to grab it, the bucket with the holes in it said, excuse me, sir, can I ask you a question? And now, after the man got over the amazement of the bucket, you know if you went in your refrigerator and your milk said, yo, can I ask you something? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so after the man got over the amazement of the bucket talking, he said, yes, buck with the hole in it. What is it? And the bucket with the hole in it said, do you, does it make your day or do you get a kick out of it to make all the other buckets laugh at me? So the man said, what you talking about? He says, every day, week after week, month after month, you come in here to get the buckets for the water for the animals. You take us over there and you fill us up with water. But by the time you come back to the barn, I never have no water left in me. And all the other buckets start laughing at me. And the man said to the bucket with the hole in it, I don't know why you're complaining. Because you are 85% of the reason why I have become a multi-millionaire. So the bucket with the hole in it said, how is that possible? And he said to the bucket with the hole in it, that every time I go over there to get water to fill y'all up, as I'm coming back, I used you to water all my crop. Now the only reason I'm telling y'all this story is because the only problem the bucket with the hole in it had is he was miscalculating his work. A majority of the individuals or the majority of the time that I ended up in prison or ended up on drugs was because I was miscalculating my worth. I did not believe that I had a purpose. Everybody say I have a purpose. I have a purpose. The bucket was miscalculating his worth. No matter what you do, your purpose is greater than any struggle you will face. No matter how hard it might be in your classrooms, no matter how it might be to stay away from the things other people are doing, don't miscalculate your worth. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I miscalculated my worth. Year after year, I was like a bucket with holes in it. I felt worthless. I never, no one ever told me that I had a purpose. And the main reason I came to talk to you today is to explain to you that you have a purpose. So no matter how hard it gets in your life, always remember you have a purpose. And your purpose came with instructions. The people you have in your life, you might think they're trying to stop you from having fun, fun, but they are simply there to give you instructions. The only reason I'm using my life to give you instructions is because I want you to take hold or receive something that I'm saying. Because it was many days when I had someone talking to me like I'm doing now, and I sat in the back like them two playing on the phone listening to something else. It was those days when I ended up not listening and ended up in prison because I did not pay attention to the man that came to talk to me. Don't do that. <coughs> no matter what you believe, I'm telling you, if you don't follow the instructions, the outcome will not be favorable for you. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. This, everybody say, my purpose, my purpose. is greater, greater than my struggle. my struggle. I got braces right here that I want to give everybody, whoever want one. It says my purpose is greater than my struggle. Come get them. Whoever believe you have a purpose. Good. Good. Shoot. Oh my God. Yo, I know. 
It's <laughs> yes, it's live. Anybody yeah. say I have a perk? I have a perk. Say I have a perk. <laughs> But the thing that I realized, just like that paper, I gave all of y'all the instructions. But did I tell y'all paper? Who controlled the outcome of how your paper looked? So you control the outcome of your purpose. You have been given a purpose, but you determine the outcome of your purpose. Now, mind you, I said that I was in prison all those times and addicted to drugs all those times. But right here, here's an article about us doing this program to help people who are in where? And where was my first picture at? So my purpose was to go back to the prisons that I used to be in to help individuals. So now I used my same thing that I struggled with to help individuals not go down the path that I went down. And I'm telling you right now, it was days where I was in prison where a man didn't like me because I was better than him in basketball. And I remember one day I was beating him on the court so bad that he was so jealous of me that he tried to stab me. And then when I caught him trying to stab me, I turned around and he was trying to kill me because I was better than him in basketball. I wanted my mom more than ever. I said, man, I, ain't, I don't want to really do this. I, I, I did the charges and the crime, but I really didn't want to be in there because I really wasn't made like that. I was just acting like I was. Everybody say I have a purpose. I have a purpose. So this story is another thing how my purpose is greater than your, your purpose is greater than any struggle you will face. If your classrooms, if your work seems hard, your purpose is greater than anything you will face. This particular man right here, my wife and I helped. We met him, he was in a homeless shelter. We met him in a homeless shelter. Eventually, he became a published author because we assisted him on publishing a book that he had all his life he wanted to publish. And why am I showing you that? I'm showing you that even though I had started out bad, I still had a purpose, and my purpose was to help people. Just like I'm coming here with you kids. I'm trying to help you not go down the path that I went. Again, more articles of us dealing with where I used to be. More articles of us doing a program to help other individuals. This particular person I want to show you, if you see right here, he's with the mayor. Y'all know the mayor, right? Yeah. This guy shaking the mayor's hand. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. The first graduation we had was in Kentop. Who said Kentop? We, we was in Kentop and we did the graduation. But this man right here's name is Mr. Charles. Hopefully one day I'll be able to bring him and talk to y'all. Mr. Charles graduated from the program that we did in prison. Now he's a real estate agent. He came home, he's a real estate agent. He has a CDL license, he's trying to drive trucks. And now, and he works at a barber shop. Now he my barber. <laughs> I went to prison to help him. He came home, he changed his life, and now we be sitting in a chair like, man, you remember when you used to come to the prison and talk to me, encourage me? And why am I saying that? Because I'm not talking to you guys in prison, I'm talking to you in school. But if you don't follow the instructions that individuals are giving you, it's possible that I might meet you where? <laughs> Everybody say, I have a purpose. So you have to remember that everything that you're doing, you have to remember you have a purpose. And your purpose is greater than your struggle. 
Everybody under the sound of my voice has been given a purpose, and you have to maximize that purpose. Just like that paper that I gave you guys. We all heard the same thing, and all our papers came out different. That will be the outcome of the person you're sitting next to. All of y'all will hear the exact same instructions in school. You will hear the exact same instructions from your parents. You will hear the exact same instructions from your mentors. You will hear the same instructions. But the outcome will depend on how you carry out those instructions. So I'm gonna have my wife come up here and talk about something, and um, then I'll come back up here after she's finished, okay? Let's give my wife a round of applause. Why? Because they're ripped. But that's the style. 
Let's go further. If you had to go to court. Oh, I'm going. I went to court. All right, let's go to court. I sat in court and I see the young people. And they came just like shorts, sweatpants, sagging. And you're standing before the judge, someone that has something to do with your life, a decision making. Next slide. Is that a proper job attire to no, wear no, to an interview or to work? No. I mean, the pants to know that it's on, but the top is no. 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 Now, these are the guys. Y'all don't like that outfit? No. 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 How much I wanted to get paid. On the application, but when they say, Do you, I know do you have any questions for me? How much will I make? <laughs> you can negotiate that later. They'll, they'll make you an offer, but that's not your first question that you want to ask. Ask something like, um, How do you promote or what's my opportunity for advancement? You know why? Because then they'll say, Oh, okay, this kid is looking like he wants to stay at the company for a long period of time. So now that it looks like you will be an investment for them. Because a lot of kids are coming, even at my job, 90 days tops, and then they out. They just want to check. They don't really want to work. They come in from the door telling, telling me what they're not going to do or what they can't do. The company is not there for you. You are there for the company. That makes sense? Next slide. So, if I told you that I have free phone for you and you got to pick, would you pick the top or the bottom? The bottom. Why? Nah, the blue one. The blue one. But why would you pick the bottom? What's wrong? It's the same phone. No, it the same phone. What does that even say? Her battery won't fall out. It doesn't say anything about the camera. I'm telling you. But I'm telling you, it's so what if I tell you that all the specs and quali all the qualities of both phones are the same? The only difference is the image, the Apple. That's the only difference between these phones. If you look up everything, they do the exact same thing. They're the specs and everything are the same, but the only difference 
You have to get to a place where you start to discover who you really are. Ask yourself, some of the things that you do, like my wife always say, something you did does not determine who you are. That was just something you did. So don't let your past mistakes, that's why I gave y'all the bracelet, to remind y'all that your purpose is greater than your struggle. Because every last one of y'all, under the sound of my voice, will face some type of struggles. But even though you face these struggles, I need you to always remember my purpose is greater than my struggle. Everybody say my purpose is greater than my struggle. So right now, um, speaking about this book, I got two books I'm giving away. You got the purple thing on your seat. Look on the back of your seat. They got them. They got think that you're the only one with a past because everybody has a past. Study has shown that past behaviors is the best predictor of future behaviors. When you begin to make the needed minor adjustments in your life, you're not only going to change the directions, but you will also make the scholars who did the study to go back to the drawing board. You cannot change your past, but you can always choose a different direction and use your old one to push you ahead. Simply today, that's what I'm doing with my life today, is using my old past behavior to push me ahead. And I want y'all to think that about all the mistakes that you might have made up to this point, you don't have to live by the mistakes that you made in your past. You can use those mistakes to push y'all to another dimension. You can go to the next stage or the next phase of your life by using your mistakes to stand on. You have to use your mistakes. Don't Your mistakes have to become your mentors. Remember that. Always remember that, text it to yourself. My mistakes have to become my mentors. Your mistakes have to become your mentors. You can always tell a person who have made, allowed their mistakes to become their mentors is because they don't repeat that mistake again. All of your mistakes have to become your mentors. And in the back, page 11. You ain't yawning, you tired. You was up all night. All day. <laughs> it says leadership coach Dan Reeland observed is communicators teach out of need, insecurity, ego, or even responsibility. They're not giving. The needy person wants praise, something the audience must give. The insecure person wants approval and acceptance, something the audience must give. The egotistical person wants to be lifted up to be superior and just a little bit better than everyone else. Something the audience must give. Even the person motivated by responsibility wants to be recognized as a faithful worker, to be seen as responsible. Something the audience must give. Many communicators teach in one of these modes all the time and aren't even aware of it. Then there's the giver. This person teaches out of love, grace, gratitude, compassion, and passion, and overflow. These are all giving modes. In each of these modes of the heart, the audience doesn't have to give anything, only receive. The teacher becomes the gift. And I say that to say this, and I'll be done with it. I want to tell y'all that I don't have to receive from y'all. It's my gift to tell y'all and expose my past mistakes in my life to show y'all that you don't have to go down the path that I went. And I'm telling you, it was it, 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 if I'm saying it's bad, it was really worse. Because some of the stuff I can't even talk about to certain people, it was worse. But I'm telling y'all that y'all have to make 
the beginning of the class, we did the, the instructions. I gave you the instructions, but we all came out with different. Some of us was left-handed, some of us was right-handed, some of us folded it this way, some of us folded that way. That's purpose. Your life will be the exact same way. But the outcome, remember, the outcome of your paper was not in your teacher's hand, wasn't in my hands, Miss Gwen's hand, it was in whose hand? So your purpose is the exact same way. You will only get out of what you have in you predicated upon how you carry out the instructions. If we telling you don't do it, don't do it. If you do this, then you're going to get whatever you put in it. Everybody say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I want to just say, um, our granddaughter, when she was a uh, young, 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 very young, she's still young, but she was about two years old, and every time she would come in the kitchen, she always wanted to go towards the if I was ironing or my husband was ironing, she always wanted to go towards the iron. She just wanted to touch it. And every time, like we're doing right now, we were trying to convince her not to touch it or get in the way or move her. No, no, no. What we're telling you now to some things is to say no to some things that are not going to have a good outcome for you. Right? One day, she came in once again, the oven, she just had to touch it. And my husband went to stop her. And I said, let her touch it. Let her touch it. He didn't like it, but she touched it. Guess what? She had a little blister. But now when she walked in that kitchen or she went near the iron, first thing she said was hot. <laughs> How she knew we that. understand that some of you guys aren't going to get it just by somebody talking to you. It might just be one of you that does. Or you may get it later. You may have to just learn by making bad mistakes. We understand that. That's not what we want for you, but we understand you. I understand that. But I want to say that in my husband's case, I'm so thankful to God that it turned out the way that it did for him. Because in 2019, it's different than 1986 and 1988. It's totally different. You guys are graduating to die. You're not graduating to live. You go from preschool, kindergarten, to 12th grade and go to a party and it's over. It's over. We're asking you to look at some things, tap in, be who you are different. It's okay to be different. And live, and live on purpose. Don't live to die. You don't get anything else. Get live on purpose. Don't graduate here and die. Live on purpose. Parties will be here, they, they still party. <laughs> I'm, I'll be 51, they still partying. I couldn't wait to go to a party and they still doing it. So they went nowhere. They went nowhere. You still have life, but give yourself an opportunity to enjoy it. Do not graduate to die. Graduate <coughs> to live. Please, please. Do y'all um, any questions, concern? Feedback, criticism, this is the time. You want to ask in regards to anything perfectly said, something. Don't just sit there because you can have a question that somebody might be afraid to ask, but it will help them if you would ask the question. Any criticism, any feedback, anybody can say anything at this time. Anything? I respect you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we was. Um, some of it. Some up like in the middle, like half and half. I actually left her for another woman before, and uh, she took me back up. <laughs> no, it was it was I was having relationship issues, so it was like you know I was thinking I wanna I didn't know my purpose. I thought that my purpose was with this other person, and I didn't realize that my purpose was actually to be doing what we're doing. So she suffered a lot, you know what I mean. But I came back. I wasn't that dumb. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just something to show you that people that love you, when you make certain decisions, people that love you go through it too. Yeah. You're hurting people that you love unnecessarily. It was it was ridiculous for him to think that he could leave me for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> 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 
Hey, yo, matter of fact, y'all can go to this website. I need y'all to do this, too. And y'all can go to that website right there and take a poll for us that we came here. Use the hashtag teams just to log in and take a poll. I'll take a picture with y'all So go to that poll. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. So my question was, if uh, if one of these young men or ten of these young men are particularly moved by what you say or feel like they need to hear more about what you say, what, uh, how they connect you? I have cards. Anybody who wants a card, I can give you a card to connect to us. Yeah, we have 800 number, we have website, we're on Facebook. If y'all want YouTube, <laughs> anybody need a card, y'all can connect to us. Sometimes people want to talk. Um, sometimes people want to talk in, in private. Like in the crowd, it's easy to hide in the crowd. Crowds are dangerous. It's easy to hide in the crowd. You blend in, you know, you wait to see if somebody's going to ask what you want to ask, and if they don't, you leave, you know, the same way you walked in. You didn't get an answer. That's why I say it's okay to be unique. It's okay to stand out. Yeah. You know, in 2019, the kids have so much pressure. You want the latest phone, you want their iPhone, you want the latest shoes, you want the latest job, you want the latest everything, and you don't want to work too hard. You don't want to get your hands dirty. You barely go outside and play, I'm going to be honest. Oh, yeah, different type of playing, basketball, that's good. But it's, it's different. And part of that is our fault because we want to school you guys. We don't have all the things. We didn't have all the things that you guys got now. We don't have all that. But we want you to be bold enough to ask, to get that information, to get into you. Even if it's one on one, if you don't want to step aside, fall back, hit us up. You know, I need a card. Call us. It's an 800 number. Most of you guys got cell phones, but it's an 800 number. You put you a phone. You go and buy me a phone. Uh, you go and buy me a phone. I teach you how to get one. I teach you how to get one. Like my phone. Oh, 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 you're already asking strangers to buy my car. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, where's my mind? Anybody else have Any questions? Any more questions, concerns, yeah. comments, feedback? How about, about drugs? I know everybody here is quiet. Nobody here do drugs, right? I don't. I don't. No, I don't. No. I don't. So, I don't. You do drugs, what you do? No, but I don't do drugs. You raise your hand? I said I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't do drugs. Anybody here drink? That's why I'm saying it's easy to hide in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Because me and my girlfriend sat around here and, and none of us would have raised our hands. I didn't do the smoke only because I didn't like nothing they kept giving me that I would taste. I didn't like none of it, so I didn't do it. Oh, so my girlfriend drank. So you think she would have sat here and in school in front of everybody and raised her hand? Think my sister would have done that? So my husband wouldn't even have done that. And drinking and cigarettes led to smoking weed, led to putting something in the weed, then to skipping the weed all together and doing the coke, then from the coke to doing the soap. It's a progression. So, and the drugs you guys are doing now is, is, is you don't know what it is. Everybody's about a dollar, so they're mixing whatever up. All right? So, I just want you to be mindful. Everybody say my purpose. My purpose is greater than my structure. My